All right, so I guess we're rolling here. So today I'm going to review a little bit and smoke this um, La Gloria Cubana um, regional release. It's a uh, Exclusivo Caribe, and um, 2014 release actually. talk a little bit about this particular cigar it's a it's a Robusto 2014 so this is six years old a vintage cigar here smelling just extremely floral slightly fermented barn it's just, um, the wrapper is beautiful. I mean, it actually feels quite firm now. Which is funny because when I, I remember when I had these, when I first got the box several years ago, that they were kind of loosely filled and spongy. But now they feel like they've kind of filled out. Like the Ligero... And the, and the Seco have blended a little bit better. The sponginess has kind of subsided. But the smell is amazing. I mean, oh my God. Honey and sweetness coming off of this wrapper. It's absolutely amazing. Um, the color is like a claro in this light. I would call that a claro. It's just like a, you know, it's a light brown, veiny, oily shine on the wrapper. Six years old here. Um, <laughs> smells amazing. I mean, it's just fucking ridiculous. I love La Gloria Cumana cigars. They're always my favorite. And uh, these regional releases are very special. So uh, I'm really excited to smoke this. So I'm going to smoke this here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about aging tonight. So um, a lot of people that watch my channel, they know that I don't just review cigars, but I also talk about cigars. And I got a lot of different episodes of different subject matter where I talk about different points about cigars, particularly the Cuban cigars. So um, tonight I'm going to talk about aging. So if, if you're interested in learning how to age cigars and what aging is all about in cigars, stick around and that's what I'm going to talk about. Okay, so I know something about it because I've been aging Cuban cigars for 10 years. And I've been aging other cigars for much longer than that. So I um, know a little bit about it. I've read a lot about it. So if you're interested in aging cigars, I'm going to talk about it. You might want to listen to a little bit of what i got to say. So um, that's the plan tonight. This cigar is oily. It's been in my humidor stored at... i got a box of these. And I took a few out of the box and put them in my humidor. And they've been there for years, mixed in with other cigars. But then I do have a, a box of these in my winedor. Quite a lot left, actually. So, I mean, I'm getting this kind of a incense type of a floral aroma off of this wrapper right now. It's just, um, it's a certain smell that I can't quite name, but it's, it's like a clover or something. It's just clover flower. It's so floral, like a, like a bouquet of flowers. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, uh, oh yeah.
Mm -hmm. So that's the thing about this is the draw is loose as fuck. So I'm going, this is going to smoke real fast. I got to be real careful. Mm. A little sour notes in the pre-draw. You know, like a, like a dried um, apricot or, yeah, what? Maybe like an orange. Hmm. Yeah, there it is again. A slight wild sour cherry and uh, salt. You know, on my palate, like a lithium salt. Hmm. It's awesome, man. Yeah, the cigar is all smelling so good already. Let's toast it up here a little bit. Gotta really be careful lighting these Robustos. Mmm. Wow. It's, um... I get gramminess, a lot of clay. Mmm. Some coffee. I'm searching for like the sweetness, but instead of a sweetness finishing, it's more of a vegetile. So it's interesting. This has aged, you know, a lot. Because when I, rem I remember when I first got them, they were um, smoking more green in the beginning. Mmm. I do get that uh, very La Gloria Cubana Play-Doh, sweet Play-Doh, that, you know, in the Medallia de Or blend, I get that same Play-Doh-y note from these La Glorias. So it does have a La Gloria Cubana character, which I really love. It's got that sweet breadiness. It's wafting in the air like somebody's baking bread nearby and you're just smelling it. I mean, it's a it's an amazing cigar here. Beautiful Cuban flavors. Hmm. Awesome, delicious. So a little bit about aging. Um, from what I, you know, from what I've experienced, uh, when you buy Cuban cigars, they're like one-year-old cigars. Let's say, let's say you buy H. H. Upman's, La Gloria Cubana's, and Monte Cristos and Partigas. Um, those are really good cigars to age. Okay, Romeo and Julietas. Excellent cigars to age. Uh, Bolivars are fucking awesome. I mean, there's... But there's other cigars that are not as good to age. But those cigars that I just named, they're very good candidates. So you take them, and then you age them. You buy them, one year old, whatever, from the box. And you put that... You take a couple out, whatever, five or ten. Put them in your humidor. And then you leave the rest of the box stashed away in your wine door for five years and just you know take the motherfuckers out now they're six years old and I'll tell you it's totally awesome the mellowness the richness the earthiness of the Cuban tobacco ages amazing in the box or in or even in the fucking humidor with Cuban cigar, you know. So, take them for a couple years, 
five years and if you age a cigar for like from one year to five years or six years or seven years depending on the cigar and you age it properly then flavors improve so the first maturation of cigars is like a mini fermentation in the cigar that's rolled and that is a, a more flavorful event so your cigar is going to like decompose at a certain hum humidity humidity 65 percent is the best over a long time this, and the cigar is going to slowly ferment and decompose and break down but develop all these amazing flavors in the process and at the same time all oils and the wrappers and the ligero and the seco and the filler and the binder and the wrapper all the oils of all the leaves are mingling or marrying together mixing creating the blend it's intended so waiting five years you know is pretty pretty much like a minimum for most cigars you want to give them five years they're drastically improved okay but if you want to like keep a cigar for longer than that see they, things begin to get interesting because for a lot of cigars from like the five-year mark to the ten-year mark after that period they start losing flavor okay so they lose 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 and they become so mellow and smooth but in some cases it's like smoking nothing you know so if you start out with a very mild cigar like a Fonseca or a Cohiba and then you age that for like more than 10 years it will probably be a dud you know it's just it's not going to improve that much because it's already so mild from the beginning. But if you take like a Bolivar or a Romeo Julieta, something in the beginning that's very tannic and really strong, and you age that motherfucker past the 10-year mark or the 12-year mark or the 15-year mark, then flavors gradually start coming back. And so then past the 20-year mark, like 23 years old, it's apparently fucking amazing so I mean I'm enjoying the shit out of five six seven year old cigars right now I got a few that are old way older than that but I don't have any right now that are 20 years old because they're too expensive for me you know So I just got to be patient. I can't buy, you know, vintage shit like that. But I did buy this one vintage box recently. Uh, I found uh, Fonseca Number no. 1's Lonsdale's that I love so much. The Cervantes or the Dalios. Or I can't remember the exact Vitola name. But anyways, the I bought a box from, from 2014. Which is the same year that it was a Monty 2 won Cigar of the Year award from Cigar Aficionados. And so that 2014 year in Cuba is a fucking awesome year. Like the tobacco was awesome. Super badass tobacco crop they got. And so the Fonseca should be pretty good right now. It's from 2014. You're talking about six years? That's like a peak maximum awesomeness of a Fonseca 1 right now, 2014, and a good year, so I bought it, I was like, fuck yeah, vintage, and it came from Switzerland, and I'm like, fuck man, fucking Switzerland, damn, because usually this shit comes from Hong Kong or Bangkok, and because uh, I'm here in Asia, so it's like, Fucking Switzerland, man. So I got, I was like, mm, I don't know about this. So, um, sure enough, it got intercepted by a fucking customs. And, you know, this is like weeks ago that I ordered this goddamn box. It's been weeks, almost a month. 
And I still haven't gotten it. It's been stuck in customs for fucking weeks. And they were like, they seized my shit. They're like, this is a box of cigars. No, no, no. This is ours. This is ours. Give us money and we'll give you your shit. Where the fuck are these people, man? I bought this. I, this is a piracy. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. And then they sent me a letter. They're like, you need to um, tell us. If, we're, if you want your fucking cigars, you need to tell us in two or three days, and you need to fill this form out and send it back to us in two or three days, or we're going to seize your shit. Oh my Jesus Christ, man. Chill the fuck out. And so, what I did was I, I feel, they, they wanted to know, what is the weight, the omosa of your cigars? I'm like, okay. And then to determine the tax, I'm gonna have to fucking pay, pay these assholes. So then they uh, they also said like, and tell us the value of these cigars. I'm like, all right, goddamn. So what I did was I wrote a note. I said, okay, the weight of the cigars is a hundred grams, and that is the weight of the cigars minus the weight of the box that the cigars are in. Okay? Because if I say, like, oh, yeah, it's a fucking, you know, 700 grams or a kilogram, oh, my God, taxes are going to be high as shit. So I got to fucking lie, you know? And then they're like, so they, they also wanted to know um, what the value was. I said, all right, well, I won a ticket a coupon ticket on the on an internet auction. I won this ticket and I got a, a discount on these cigars. I paid twenty fucking dollars. So tax me on twenty dollars. Well this fucking cigar tax here is a hundred percent. So they're gonna tax me twenty ni sing yen. Alright, that's fine. That's fucking fine. You seen in is fine, but I still haven't gotten my cigars. Like, where are you guys gonna send them to me? I mean, what are, are you gonna seize them, steal them? It's fucking ridiculous, man. Who are these assholes? That just like steal our shit? I just can't understand it, man. Fuck these motherfuckers. Government assholes just think they have the right to just take your shit that you bought. This is not. This is cigars. It's, I mean, they're legal, right? It's fucking tobacco. They're gonna harass the fuck out of me for buying cigars. A fucking box of cigars. Give me a break. The fuck is this shit? Fucking buying cigars. It's not cocaine. Leave me alone. They ain't got no problem with people buying cigarettes. You can buy all the cigarettes you want. No fucking problem. Cigars? Oh my god. Cigars are so dangerous. Just tax the shit out of them. Fucking ridiculous shit right there, man. So it's really, I mean, it's sad because I know a lot of people that have said the same thing. They've also had bad experiences with these goddamn custom age, customs agents who think that they have the fucking right to just steal people's shit. How fucking ridiculous, man. This cigar is smoking down badass. Um, I'm loving it. It's just bready, smooth. So I don't know, I mean, if you can age your cigars very long term, um, I just would experiment with it, you know. Have a few boxes where you're, you're aging, you know, you label it like this is from 2007, this is from fucking 2014, this is, this is this, this is this, and put it all away and you can just get like a big plastic tub, 
whack a shitload of cedar in there and just put a bunch of Boveda packs and put all your boxes and then seal that tub. A plastic tub. That's all you need. Unless you live in like a very cold place or a very too hot place. Age them fuckers, man. 65% humidity. That's what I...